I just received a, quite an interesting problem from um, from a customer, so I thought I would just share the solution because it's quite an interesting exercise that I just went through to see if I could solve it. So basically, they've got a file that looks a bit like this. I've made up the text and stuff that's in here, and the file is much bigger than this. But essentially, they have some um, some codes, key codes, in one column. The language is across the top. And then they have the different translations in the file, and they're color-coded. And what they want to be able to do is to filter in Studio on individual segments based on the coloring, because then they could send them to different translators by exporting them using the Community Advanced Display Filter. The problem is they're using the Bilingual Excel filter for this, and the Bilingual Excel filter in Studio does not support bringing in any information related to the formatting in the Excel file whatsoever. So once it comes into Studio, there's nothing in there to help you identify what these different colors are. So what I did was I created a, another file. You'll note this one is XLSM, which is a macro file. And the reason for that, a macro enabled file, is because I added another column on here. And in here, I've written some formula to identify what the color of the cell is. The formula that I've got here is just an if statement in Excel. So that was fairly straightforward and there was only three different colors. So that was really very straightforward. Um, but the RGB bit I got from a, a Visual Basic macro. I don't know how to write in Visual Basic, but it was fairly straightforward to find, um, to find something with a quick search that could give me the RGB code of the color. So if I press Alt F11, and then I just pasted this little macro in here, a VBA macro, which identifies the RGB color from the cell so and gives it that RGB name. So once I've done that, I could then put that into this formulae to identify which color it is and replace the RGB code with the actual color of the name. And then all I did was I just saved this as plain text and saved it back as the Excel file again. So even if this file was really big, I could very quickly color up the cells with the proper name. I imagine if you're really smart and you know how to use Visual Basic, you could have written the whole thing in Visual Basic and it would have been much easier. Um, but just taking a quick look at it, it was the easiest way for me to do this now with the limited skills that I've got. So I closed that file and I saved that as a plain Excel file, which is here. And this time you can see it's plain text and remove the macro. So I'm not going to have no problems dealing with this file in Studio. So it's essentially, this is the original file, but with the colors of each row in it. So once I've got that, what I can do is go into Studio. Foolishly, I closed it. I don't know why I did that. So I go into Studio and I'm going to configure the bilingual Excel file. So I'm just testing a couple of plugs in at the moment, plugins at the moment. So I'm going to configure the bilingual Excel file to take the information out of those files in the out of that Excel file in the order in which I want. So in there I can specify what to do with little bits with different bits of information in that file. So here we are with Studio. So now if I come to my options, my file type options. Let me just cancel that because I did it with the keyboard shortcut, which is basically file options, file types, and then down to bilingual Excel file and then common. I can specify the source column, which is B, which is the Danish column in this case, translation column, which is E. So I'm just taking one pair of the languages here. First line into column heading, so I'll take that and I'm adding into the context information column A and column F. Column A was the key text or text key information and column F is the color. I add that in as context information. What I always do, all also did, because this is the bilingual Excel file I want to be used here, is I made sure that the bilingual Excel file was above all the other Excel files, which you can do with just by moving it up and down like that. The one that's at the top of the list is the one that will be used in Studio. So I click on OK. And now I can open the file. I'm just going to use Control Shift O, which is just to create a single file project, just to open it. Pick the Excel file, which opens like this. Flip the languages around and go English or Danish to English. 
Oops. Selected the wrong one. Danish to English. Won't use a GM or anything like that. And this opens up in studio. I've got a bit of a funny layout here because I'm using a couple of apps and I've been playing around with my screen a bit. So it, it doesn't have to look like this specifically. And what you'll see I've got here is this is the community advanced display filter that's just here. Um, this is an enhanced version of the advanced display filter that you get out of the box in studio. You get this one from the app store. And I've installed this little plugin here called the DSI viewer, which you'll also find on the app store. And the reason I've done that is because now that I've got this information in my Excel file, if I click on the document structure information column, you'll see that it's pulling in the information that was in column A and column F. Column A being the text key and column F being the color, yellow, so I can see what it is. Now, because I don't want to have to keep clicking on each one because that's not very helpful, if I install this plugin, the DSI viewer, Watch what happens to the color and the text key as I scroll down through the segments. I can see immediately what color it should have been and what the text key is, which is quite useful information. But more importantly, now that I have that in here, using the community advanced display filter, I can click on the DSA information column and I can filter on anything that's written inside this document structure information box. So here, I've, if for example, I want just the yellow segment, I can type yellow in there because this is one of the words that I've got in here. Apply the filter, and now I'm looking at just what's in the. Um, I'm just looking at the segments in that Excel file that are for yellow, and from there I can now use the um, generate STLXLIF and save an STLXLIF file that contains only the yellow segments. Um, I can also then I can go and do the same thing for the red. And apply the filter. And there's just the red. You can see if I arrow down through these segments, each one of those segments is red. And if I clear that filter and do the green, and now I've got only the green. So that's one way of solving the problem of getting around, being able to export files with only segments that you need that are based on colors when you're using the bilingual Excel filter. It's a really smart example, really, I think, of showing you how useful the plugins from the App Store can be because with a combination of the studio filter, the bilingual Excel filter, and then the DSI viewer and the community advanced display filter, there's a really good example of how they can all combine to give you a nice, capable solution of dealing with what you need. So I hope that was helpful.